The doctrine of justification is the bedrock of the connection that appeases God and man. If we subtract this doctrine, Christianity completely deteriorates. Martin Luther said, this doctrine, referring to justification by faith alone, is the head and the cornerstone. It alone begets, nourishes, builds, preserves, and defends the church of God. Without it, the church cannot exist for one hour. Justification is not defined as being made righteous. It's also an error to define justification as just as if I've never sinned. Justification is purely a legal term that describes what God has declared about the believer, not how he changes the believer. It is all based in Christ's righteousness. Without this doctrine, salvation is impossible. That is why it is such an imperative biblical truth to grasp. In understanding biblical justification, there are four contrasts that may help. The first contrast is that of instantaneous versus gradual. Justification is not a process that we go on where we gradually become more and more justified, but it is an instantaneous work of God. The second contrast is that of declared righteous versus made righteous. In justification, we are legally declared by God righteous, yet we are not made righteous. This shows up in the fact that we will still struggle with sin until the day that we die, yet we will never lose the declaration of God towards us. The third is imputed versus infused righteousness. You see, it, it is not our righteousness and the righteousness of Christ that come together to justify, but it is solely the righteousness of Christ that is imputed to our account. Lastly is the contrast of faith alone versus faith plus. Justification is not faith plus baptism or faith plus the Lord's Supper, or church attendance, or good works. Justification is based solely on faith alone. In the early chapters of Romans, Paul proves that all Christians are under sin, that we have nothing to offer God, no righteousness at all. We may do some good things, and we may have some value in the eyes of man, but God does not accept that type of payment because it is of man. God demands a divine payment. The central verses for this doctrine are found in Romans 3, verse 21 and 22. In verse 21, Paul immediately says, but now, if we have any grasp on our total depravity and sin, we will come to realize that these are two of the Bible's main words. These words indicate a change, that we have been brought from a state of God's wrath to a state of God's divine righteousness. And how do we receive this divine righteousness? Well, Paul tells us in verse 22 when he says, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. God supplies and uses faith as a means to justify sinners. Just as Paul has laid out in Romans, we must first acknowledge God's wrath, human sin, the cross, and a divine righteousness. You do not have to be some great theologian to understand these truths, but to be justified, you have to believe all of it to be true. You don't have to raise your hand you don't have to sign a card or join a church. You don't have to walk down an aisle. You don't have to surrender. You don't have to say a prayer. You don't have to feel anything. As long as your faith, no matter how small or large, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. As long as you have acknowledged your sin before God and placed your trust in His sacrificial work, 
This faith will be a channel in which God will impute the righteousness of the spotless Lamb. We must never stop proclaiming this truth because this is purely the gospel of Jesus Christ.